The last advanced thermal treatment technology we'll touch on is gasification. So gasification um, kind of takes pyrolysis and takes it a step further. So in pyrolysis, we take our waste, we cook it, we start getting it broken down into some different solids, liquids, and gases. Gasification is all about pushing the reaction a little bit further and maximizing the gas production. So we add a little bit of oxygen, we add a little bit more heat, and we try and keep those reactions going and proceeding all the way to producing gas. So the mixture of gas will tend to get out of a gasification reaction is primarily carbon monoxide and hydrogen, and that mixture, mixture together uh, is called syngas. So it's a little more uniform than the gas mixture we get from pyrolysis, which is kind of less completely gasified, whereas syngas, we've shifted everything as much as possible into these major components. Um, and the addition of a little bit of oxygen helps us have an autothermic process. So autothermic means it's exothermic, but just exothermic enough to sustain the reaction. We're not trying to create energy here like we are in an incineration. We're just trying to move everything into this mixture of syngas and just be left with ash, uh, inert ash leftover as our solid product. Now, because uh, gasification is really focusing on continuing this reaction to form a lot of gas, uh, we don't have a useful solid product like we do from pyrolysis. So we don't really want our ash in the end. So a typical thing that will happen with gasification plants is the ash will be melted into like a vitrified cube that's really inert and um, easier to dispose of. And I'll show you some pictures when we get into the ash management unit. But um, that can be... Um, accomplished you can use some of your syngas to supply the heat to melt the ash um, or you can use a plasma torch to do so there are about 100 plants worldwide that do gasification of municipal solid waste. Um, they're mostly located in Japan, and four of these use plasma gasification, um, which is kind of the most high-tech um, version of this. Um, but like I talked about, uh, there's a lot of coal gasification and wood gasification plants, um, but waste, they're just a little bit uh, more tricky to operate because of the variability of the waste and moisture and all these other issues that happen with waste. Once we get all everything shifted into syngas, um, there's a few things we can do with our syngas mixture. Um, so both uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen are combustible, so they can be burned uh, in engines to produce energy. And this will be more efficient than the boilers that are used for incinerators. Um, with boilers, we're heating up air and the air is heating up water, and then the water is um, turning into steam and turning into the turbine. So there's a few steps involved, so it ends up being less efficient than just burning the gas directly and sending the exhaust from the gas through um, an engine or a turbine like we do with biogas. So that's one potential use. Um, another is to recover those chemicals and do something else with them. So hydrogen we know is a valuable chemical. There's a lot of things we can do with hydrogen. Um, we can uh, uh, fix uh, atmospheric nitrogen through the Haber process and get ammonia. That's a really common um, industrial reaction used, and it's one that is very energy intensive. So if there's ways that we can lower that using kind of a green or renewable hydrogen source, um, that is a good thing. You can use hydrogen with carbon dioxide to produce methanol, uh, and that leads to a whole bunch of other chemicals that can be built off that backbone. So there's all sorts of synthetic chemicals that we can make with hydrogen as a starting point and carbon dioxide. And we can also use hydrogen in fuel cells. So that gives us no tailpipe emissions. We just get H2O and theoretically a lot more efficient than uh, things like batteries. There are a few fuel cell buses and things around, but it really hasn't uh, grown on the scale where battery electric has, for example. Um, but it might be something we see more of. Um, another thing is hydrogen as a way to store electricity or make electricity um, mobile. So there's this emerging hydrogen economy, which can be supported by hydrogen from gasification as well. The carbon monoxide side of it, um, Again, it can be burned, like I mentioned in the first point. We can also shift uh, carbon monoxide into hydrogen using the water gas shift reaction. And then we can do all those good things we can do with hydrogen with the carbon monoxide. Here's a quick example of a gasification plant located in Edmonton called Enerchem. 
Um, and you'll see a lot of similar things that we've seen in other uh, waste technologies so far. So uh, we've got our feed here, which is our uh, municipal solid waste and other feedstocks. Uh, and they're coming into the gasification reaction here, which is a fluidized bed, which I showed you uh, when we were talking about incineration. So you can also use them for gasification. It's just a really good way to get good heat transfer and mass transfer. We've got an air supply or pure oxygen supply here um, because gasification, we need a little bit of oxygen involved. So that's something that's different from pyrolysis. Um, again, we've got solids coming out the bottom, which is our bottom ash, similar to what we get from incineration. And then we've got kind of our hot gases coming out of the top. So the heat from the gases themselves can pass through heat recovery and that can be used. And then the syngas as well uh, is coming out and that's the actual valuable product. So there's all kinds of junk in the syngas from our gasification reactor. It'll pass through some uh, scrubbing steps, uh, catalytic, catalytic reduction um, and purification. And then the end product here will be biofuels and chemicals made with the syngas.